That expression, expect the unexpected. Uh, just occasionally, once in a blue moon, she gives a cliche, it happens on Fox, where the truth turns on because somebody's decided that they don't want to buy into the normal uh, BS, let's smear by it with any old garbage, uh, and they want to keep it factually correct. I know, out on Fox News and on their favorite subject of immigration and the border. Wow. Richard, I guess on the sort of flip side of this coin, a lot of Republicans now are lining up behind former President Trump, who says he's gearing up to institute mass scale deportations of millions of people. Do you think that's the answer? Well, first, my heart goes out to these two families and all the families that have been victims of these type of crimes because they're very heinous and they're infuriating as Americans to see these crimes happen. A couple of days ago, um, Governor Westmore was on with um, our own Brian Kilman and he talked about how infuriated he was because one of these crimes happened in his state um, and how he was infuriated for this family, this mother of five, and now he wants something done. And what he pointed to was something I think we don't do enough in this city. We are, because we're in this election phase, we're quick to point to what was this person's fault and it's that person's fault. But there's a lack of courage in this city overall when it comes to getting real immigration work done. Meaning we can Washington. In Washington, D.C. Um, this is where we are right now, right? Uh, but I, I think because, listen, we can continue to rule by executive order, which is what we've done for the past couple of presidencies. Barack Obama had EOs, then Donald Trump had EOs, now Joe Biden has passed some EOs. We all know, but both Mark, you, we know that EOs do not attend, they're not, there's money, not money attached to EOs, there's not personnel attached to EOs, there's not new spending attached to EOs. These are band-aids to bullet wounds. If we really want to fix the problem with our immigration, it requires Congress to actually get some work done to, one, secure the border, two, modernize our system, and three, ensure that these folks will never cross. It's not a wall by itself, but it's also, if we're going to do mass deportations, as uh, Donald Trump is advocating for, where are the planes going to come from? You have to pay for those planes. You have to pay for the personnel to man those planes. All that requires congressional action, which means Congress needs to get to work and get something done, whether yeah, they're Democrats or Republicans. I have to tell you that Mark has been vehemently shaking his head ever since <laughs> he started You can shake his head. Surprise that I'm it doesn't disagreeing change, with it. doesn't change the facts. Well, it, it does change the fact because your facts are wrong. Congress no, does not no. have to. Congress, the, the president has all the authority he needs to shut down the border tomorrow. In Trump versus Hawaii, the Supreme Court ruled that the president has unlimited authority to bar any alien from entering the country. But authority is not the problem, it's and resources. No, no, I'm sorry. If you want to, if he wants to just pass border funding, the Congress will pass it tomorrow. That's you, not it, true. Yeah, it that's if it's just pure border funding. That is actually that, not true. It I is mean, actually true. Uh, but Richard. Mark, this is where I have to stop you because no. Senator Langford and Kristen Sinema no, that put, wasn't put, border funding. No, they put that, forward a, the, the, no. the most conservative border bill that no, we've seen not. in decades. It was a terrible border it bill was, that would have tied the hands it, no, of Donald no, Trump no, no, when he came me. in. No. Uh, yes, exactly. It would tie the you said you said you said the quiet part out loud. It would have tied the hands of Donald Trump instead of but it would have also secured the border. It would have hired more immigration judges. It would have purchased more planes for us Richard, to deport folks who are illegally here, that bill. and it would have also secured the board. I've read the bill. I know what's I've in read it. the bill, too. And I know right what's now, in the it. I'm sorry, you're wrong. I am the not wrong. You're 100% wrong. The president right now has unlimited authority he held, held by the, the Supreme resources. Court to prevent anyone from entering into the country. This bill would have put restrictions on how many people, would, at what point, how many thousands of people were crossing the border before he could. It would have tied the hands of the next president. If you just want to put a bill yeah, adding more agents, adding more funding to deport people. That was in people, that bill. It, but <laughs> It was, but along with restrictions you on the do, president's power. You do, I think, power. realistically here need both, right? If the president took maximum executive action tomorrow to shut down, he the, could border, shut down the border, as tomorrow. you said, Congress would eventually have to subsidize the policies. That's not the problem. There's no disagreement with Republicans on on funding border security. What they disagree with is all the parts of the bill that would have restricted the president's ability to but shut down the border. There is disagreement with Democrats about the funding. Well, look, yeah, the Democrats are against Democrats the funding. So talk to the wrong side, Richard. Richard. De Democrats are willing to vote for the bill that Senator Langford put forward, but it's also worth pointing out here that the border is five thousand miles. It's five. It's five thousand miles. So the idea of saying we're going to shut down the border, even though the border is not contiguous, not one wall is going to do it. You're going to need funding from Congress to get it done. Republicans at this moment aren't willing to do it because Mark said they are worried about Donald Trump. That's not what I said. You sure did. <laughs> it's not what I said. I appreciate both bill. of you getting into it. It's probably <laughs> top three issues we're talking about this election cycle, so we're going to keep going, but we got to leave this segment here for today. Thank you both so Good much. Good to see you. You too. It's funny. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what like led up to that? Or is there anything that we didn't see that precipitated that? Um... No, it's no. just that Marjorie is a little slow. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, you know, what most people don't know is that on this particular day, we were supposed to have our hearing at 11 a.m. Okay. Instead, it wasn't until like 8 p.m. Like they were trying to compete with you for like ratings, I uh -huh. guess. Why? C-SPAN. You Why know, was... C-SPAN trying to get it up. But nevertheless, um, what it was is that they had gone to New York because they wanted to be by Trump's side oh. as he was in trial. So you had to wait for them? So we had to wait for them to come back. Oh. So, so then, and, and the hearing was supposed to be about the AG, right? So okay. we're supposed to be talking about AG Mayor Garland. And she starts talking about Judge Marchand. So now I'm upset because it's already late at night. I've been here all day, ready to work. Y'all aren't here. And you're still talking about that failed trial. So I had to ask her if she understood because she's not the brightest. Uh-huh, right. Oh, um, yeah. And ultimately, she, you know, just She decided, attacked you she personally. Did. She did. Yeah, she started it. She did. Did you have that phrase? Uh, what was it again? Uh, <laughs> uh, bleach blonde. Bad built. Bad built. Butch body. Butch body. That's right. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. Was that floating around in your head before this? No. No. No, no, no. Holy no. cow. You just, that just came out? It, not really. So, like, when you clip it up, I mean, it looked like it was really fast, but it wasn't. Um, there was a lot of time that passed. Okay. So, they were supposed to either kick her out or she was supposed to apologize. Uh-huh. And ultimately, Comer, who y'all saw, is very confused. Yeah. Um, he seems perpetually he, confused. Absolutely. Yeah. He, he then also revealed in that hearing that he has two hearing aids. So, he was like, if y'all didn't realize I got two hearing aids, I can't hear. That's convenient. So, we were like, oh, so we're having a hearing about the fact that you don't have the audio recordings from the AG. Got ah, it. Because you can't hear them anyway. So what do you need it for? <laughs> but, but nevertheless, so uh, there was a lot of time that passed, but it was clear that he was about to rule the wrong way. Ah. So when he did that, I looked over and I dressed her from head to toe and I wrote it down. I see. Yeah. Interesting. Well, that was impressive, I have to tell you. <laughs> um, did you... Right, where should we start? Uh, let's start with Tammy. Uh, went on Google to see if you've ever said anything which could be described as uh, politically relevant or politically factually correct or politically worth quoting. Something where there's been a conversation and you've said something which the majority of people uh, think is, that's accurate. Nope, nothing. Natural born liar. No wonder you're at Fox. <sighs> Butt of all jokes, I suppose. Uh, Skank, Skank, what's the guy? What's, what's, oh, yeah, you use the M-word quite a lot, don't you, Skank? You're one of these progressives. Uh, you're playing both sides of the wing, really. At the end of the day, you probably go home and laugh at people like uh, Bernie Sanders. Uh, use the M-word, don't you? Mm, don't like us mentioning that, do you? Never mind. Uh, Mr. Morgan, the guy who was at CNN, he was at CNN once, can you believe it? Whichever side the bread is buttered is where you'll find uh, Piers Morgan. Um, by the way, crawled up the backside of the losing president of the United States of America. Some people say he's a brown noser. Other people say he's full of, well, you know what, doo-doo. But hey, Piers, welcome to YouTube. <laughs> I think you should take a cognitive test like I did. I took a cognitive test and I aced it. Doc Ronnie, Doc Ronnie Johnson. Does everyone know Ronnie Johnson, Congress? They're saying Biden needs to move to the center. Is it a little late for that, Katie? Hey, I mean, excuse me. Kaylee, Kaylee, I'll take it. I'll take it. I love Katie, so I'll take it. I, I do. Biden's cognitive ability is not good. Anyone with eyes to see, you can see it. Every week it gets worse, and, and it's getting worse by the day. <laughs> Biden's
Biden's cognitive ability is not good. Anyone with eyes. to see you can see it every week it gets worse we'll do it again here we go thank you very much DA Alvin Bragg has now tried a renewed attempt to continue the gag order against President Trump, the same gag order that violates every American's First Amendment rights, let alone the candidate for president, the leading candidate for president. He's renewing his uh, claims that it is necessary to maintain them, even though the trial is over. He is stating that the reason is because, once again, those very scary MAGA make America great again Republicans in our country, the people that love our country, happen to be the cause of fear for a judge. I get death threats, Sean, pretty much every week. Um, I don't blame the DNC. I don't blame anybody that's uneducated. I don't go on a, tir a tirade about it. I take it because I'm a public person because it's kind of what I asked for. But here we've got a guy who's political and we have him using anything he can to take the constitutional rights of Americans, especially the rights of us to choose and hear the leading candidate for president of the United States of America by taking away his voice. It's so desperate and pathetic. It's not enough that they can't win in court because they get overturned. Now they have to silence their opponent. It's absolute election oh. interference. That's good. You know what we ought to do? We ought to take the pride flag out of schools and put the Bible back in. You know what? You know what? We ought to, we ought to take the trans flag down from all of our federal buildings and over every federal building in America, write the words, in God we trust. In God we trust. Amen. By the way, it's not just rural America. I don't like leaving my house in the middle of New York City, okay? I I'm sorry, but I, I used to walk all over the place. I don't walk anywhere any anymore in New York City. I, I mean, there's so many cases of murder. John Lonsky, it's hard to keep track. There's Rachel Morin, the Maryland mother, right? Th then there's the 12-year-old girl, uh, Jocelyn Nundery. Way in here, John Lonsky. You know, none of this had to happen, but, you know, this begins with Joe Biden's toleration of illegal stress, illegal immigration. You're breaking the law at the border. They come into this country. They feel free to go ahead and break the law in very horrific manners. It's